Hi, I'm Diane Power, and I'm here today to work on some high school paintings. I'm going to start with the Iliad and the Odyssey, and we're going to be at the point right when he reaches land and to see what's around him. Okay, so I'm going to be using, I have six paints here, and I have different brushes. Now for high school paintings, and even adult paintings, what you're doing is honing your skills that you learned in the lower grades and the middle school years that what your focus is on really paying attention with your powers of observation the difference between light and shadow and when your eye has been trained that you see the difference in the sky and you take a look at sunsets before you actually paint um, to, to really get a sense of how are things mixed uh, those are all things that you're looking at um, and, and trying to transfer to your paintings as you get older. Now is it more common for the high schoolers to use multiple brushes? Because I see a lot of the younger kids doing that where they'll use the brush on its side mm -hmm. or something like that. So Christy just got me some fresh water so thank you very much with all the pigment it was very dark. And feel free to clean your water and use clean water as often as you can. I also like to squeeze my brush out so it's not too wet. I don't want to keep adding water to my, my paper. And I'd like to really make sure it's a little drier to, to add in more detail here so it's a, a stark shadow against more of a watercolor background. So what I'm going to do um, to fix that... I like how the kids are using the same techniques, but as you said, they're including more detail and more accuracy because all these things that you're doing take such uh, accuracy and stability with your hands. And the way it's looking as it's taking shape, and this, it's, to me it's really important not to just put your ideas down, but to watch how the colors are speaking to you. And I think that's something that really comes with practicing with your painting and really letting the picture talk to you. What does it want to become? What story is the painting? You're in a conversation with the paint and the colors. And you can continue to try to force and add and add, but at some point, I began right away with first grade and after a certain point we just stop and stand and look. We step away from our painting, take a look what's trying to come out. Maybe you're trying to put a, a gnome right in the middle, but he's not there. He's actually growing here and, and you're fighting with it. So I really like to, to look at what's um, coming up with your dialogue with the paint.